not getting enough work in practice. With the baseball and softball seasons underway, the training season never stops. Complete Performance Baseball Academy in Fairfield, New Jersey is dedicated to providing full service training to assist in developing a player to their fullest potential. Our coaches are committed to train and prepare our players by providing a personalized instructional experience that will enhance their competitive skill level and foster a relentless quest of personal excellence. The next step is up to you. You ready to embrace the grind? We are Talking Base, North Jersey Sports.com's original multimedia series talking all things baseball across North Jersey. This is season three, episode seven, and all cheers because the gang's all here. Joey Chaperone, where have you been, my friend? Core, I was under the weather. I wasn't feeling well, and I, I didn't actually know because I, I was so out of it. I didn't actually know you did the show until I spoke to you earlier this week, and you said you had uh, who the hell was it? Oh, Seaslack on, right? I had Seaslack uh, of the Bergen County champion St. Joseph Green Knights. And I also had Brian Jalalia, who I put the K-Bosh on right after he won the county tournament. And then I believe he went out the next day and lost in the first round of the States. So he was nonplussed. But, yes, we missed you. Yeah, I, I, I felt, I, I, you know, I was before I came out here, I told my wife, I said, I got to go outside and do the show. Help, you know, with the kids in the shower. Uh, right. Did what we had to do. And I said, I, yeah, I feel like I haven't done the show in like a month, but uh, it's actually only been about, it's only been about 10 days. So it's good to be back. Now what, it's good to be, what, per, what precipitated this bout of illness? Was it I just, have no uh, idea. I have, I don't know. I have no idea. It was a virus. Uh, right. so I had the, I had the chills, low grade fever, but it was literally mm. 24 hours. I woke up the next day. Good to go. Yeah. That used to That's happen a, to me a lot in college. It used to happen to me a lot in college on Friday nights, like into Saturdays. I used to get that same illness. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, Joe. Well, hey, listen, we are glad you're back because there is a lot to talk about here as we come down the home stretch of the 2016 high school baseball season. We got teams left as the state tournament moves to the section finals. Let's just run down. Uh, first of all, our guest list, we will have on the show tonight, your favorite and mine, a man who has, des who uh, will have, he's got a new title. We'll unveil it a little bit later in the show. The uh, head coach, formerly known as Mikey Carsage from Woodridge High School will join us. They will be playing in the North One Group One State Sectional Final at Waldwick on Friday afternoon. In Another North one Group of our Group favorites. Two. Another one of our favorites, Frankie Clark. Yes. Uh, he had some choice words for you after the game yesterday. I did cover Wolf and Creskill. They cannot be used here on our air because this is a family show. Frank, but, uh, I I'll, find it I'll hard to believe that Frank would say anything negative. Oh, wait. Did he not want to tell me that they're moving the fence in and right field again? And it's going to be 160? I heard it. it's going to be 160 down the line. And every other batter has to be a nine-year-old so that they, they have the opportunity to hit a home run. <laughs> uh, no, actually, he just sent his best regards, so you can take all that back. He's a good uh, man. North He's one, a good man. Yeah, in North One Group Two, we have uh, Pascac Hills, number twelve seed, just busting up that whole bracket. Uh, they knocked off Mawa the other day, and their head coach Kevin Kirkby will join us on the show tonight. In North One Group Three. We've got Northern Highlands and Ramapo. They're going to play on Thursday afternoon, a good old-fashioned NBIL battle for a sectional title. That should be fun. North 1 Group 4, Ridgewood survived a tough test against Eastside. Uh, they're moving on to the final where they will play. You know, and they get kind of get an unlucky break. Ridgewood is the number two seed, and that is the only bracket that we have that is chalk going down to the final. So Morristown will have the home field advantage in that one. We wish Kurt Holman a guest earlier this season. On Talking Baseball, the best there. And in North 2, Group 2, we have Parsippany, the 8 seed, will host Lyndhurst, uh, number 11. And then we got the semifinals in the non-publics, Del Barton against St. Joseph, the Bergen County champion. That's the 1-4 game. And then we have the 3-2 game, Bergen Catholic on the road at Seton Hall Prep. And St. Mary of Rutherford still alive in the non-public North B semifinals. They will play Newark Academy. But, Joe, we're going to get into all that stuff. We're going to do state playoff baseball up the wazoo on this show tonight with our guests coming up shortly. But there are a few issues that maybe we should talk about here 
before we get into that, the Bergen County Tournament, a tournament near and dear to your heart and to mine. We've been uh, around it now for going on, well, for me, it's going on 20 years. So I've seen a lot of them. And this was the wackiest ending I have ever seen in my life. Now, I know you weren't there. You were predisposed. You had family business. I understand that on Memorial Day weekend. But I was out working. (laughs) Right. Uh, That was a polite way to say Joe was out fishing uh, on the day of the Bergen (laughs) County Championship game. But uh, I'm sure you read about it, the brilliant coverage on NorthJerseySports.com. I'm sure you saw some pictures, the brilliant photography on NorthJerseySports.com. What do you think of that ending? Uh not seeing it, you... but but reading about it and hearing about it, it's a shame. Unfortunate, takes away, you know. But it, again, you know, it's it's easy to sit there and be tough like that. I, I you know, I was probably more difficult. Uh, like I said, the, the Bergen County Umpires Association probably had a party when when they heard I wasn't going to be coaching anymore because I was pretty hard on them, but. It, you know, game like that, you, you got two quality teams. It, it's a tough, tough thing to to end a game. Uh, you know, um, but it's, you play the game. Human human error. It's what makes it's it, what makes the game. You know, the game. It's it's a part of it. There's you can't change it. Two teams played their hearts out, and you know it ended on a tough note for one, and and uh, a championship for the other. Um, you know, tough way to end the game, and um, it was unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, listen, you got four umpires in that Bergen County final. Everybody's responsible for one base. Last play of the game, bases loaded, two-run game. And listen, I am the last guy who blames umpires or referees for anything. I mean, I've talked to all all the shows we do across all the sports here. I always say, listen, it's never the referee's fault. It's never, of course, unless, of course, it's that jerk Nick Brown. Then it's always his fault. But in basketball. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, I am always the first to say, listen, you had, you know, uh, 31 other minutes, you had 20 right, other outs right. to worry about when it's the last play right. of the game, the Bergen County final. And I got to be honest, I don't want to rip the guy. I don't know his name. I wouldn't give it here on the show if I did. But boy, did he blow a friggin' call in the last play of the Bergen County final. I, okay. I, I agree, <laughs> but let's, let's take it from, let, let, I, I agree that, that, it was a tough way to end the game. Um, yeah. But I, I also have to say, and, you know, teams don't like this, and a lot of people are going to say, wow, you know, coming from you, you, within the context of the game, I mean, yeah, you you know, you, you get on umpires, and, you know, there's different personalities. Some guys are going to let you go. Some guys know it's the passion. Some guys take it personally and shut it down right away. But at the same time, there's no umpire out there trying to, to kick a call or, 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 or okay. make a call that's, that's going to cost a kid a game. Now, that being said, let's take it off the umpires and, and let's put it on the kids and the players because I wasn't at the game, but were there other times where, you know, a team could have executed, a team could have gotten a base hit, a team had opportunities to score a run. You know, if that ball's not a ground ball and that ball's a line drive to left field base hit, you know, we're not having this conversation. So, you know, the game is but what it is. The thing was, you know, the thing was, though, there were no really other chances. I mean, Devin Ortiz was spectacular for St. Joe's. Uh, four, right, first, what, four innings, first four innings, 12 up, 12 down. He gave up one hit in the fourth, one hit in the fifth, I think. Or one hit in the fifth, one hit in the sixth. <clears throat> and then even what he gave up in the seventh, they were not hit hard hit balls. I mean, it was two bleeders and a bloop. And, and next thing you know, all of a sudden, in a game that looked like it was a potential, you know, historic, uh, perfect game, one hit, shut out, all these other things, you're thinking, you know, I'm thinking from a journalistic standpoint, like, you know, I'm going to write about one of the greatest pitch games here ever in a Bergen County final, and then all that stuff right. happens, and then the game ends the way it did. And, uh, I, you know, I, I feel terrible for that umpire because I'm sure he did not want to get that call wrong. But the the fact of the matter is there's no making it up after it's the last out. And I will also, we should say this. Bob Majeo, the head coach at Bergen Catholic, could not have been more classy after the game. And let's give uh, some credit to uh, Bob Karsich and all the other guys who were in the Bergen Catholic dugout because I was standing right next to it when the whole thing went down. I mean, I was just about in the Bergen Catholic dugout. They shut it down right away. They pulled their kids off the field. They made them get in the handshake line. 
they went down the left field line, talked to their kids. Uh, I, Bob Majeo gave me five, seven minutes of interview afterwards. He said, listen, did it change the game? Yes. Was it a dis- disappointing way to finish a county championship game? Yes, but there is no uh, replay in high school baseball. Congratulations to St. Joe's. So, listen, it that set the tone for way the for the way his kids reacted, and we got to give him a lot of credit there. And that's you know that that's why I, I mean you got you go in that dugout. You know I know Bob a long time, a good guy. Uh, you know he's not going to be one to to throw a tantrum on the field and go nuts. And you know Sitch, everybody speaks for himself. You know you know his reputation and and Jimmy Larose. You know I, I don't know if there's a better baseball guy out there than Jimmy Larose. He's he, you know he. That's a staff that's going to teach their kids, listen, play the game, keep your mouth shut, you know, and, and accept what happens. And that's not an easy thing to accept. Uh, you know, the fact that they didn't have any any offense going and, you know, here they are battling, battling, battling. And, you know, to have it go that way against them, they, they could have very easily and justifiably gone bananas. Um, and, exactly. and, you know, they, they, they didn't. And, and like we said, it's it's not – Blaming anyone, it's a tough way for it to end. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate. It, it's unfortunate that, that a game of that magnitude, you know, had a little bit of a sour or a lot of a sour uh, taste left in, in the mouths of the Bergen Catholic kids. Um, but, you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough. It was just tough. Yes, and if you know if if the baseball gods, as Mark Cizak likes to say, are watching out, then uh, St. Joe's will beat Del Barton, and Bergen Catholic will play will beat Seton Hall Prep, and then they can do it all over again. But then again, Absolutely. Joe, it was it was a county final between parochial schools. So do we really care? No. <laughs> Let's move on then. <laughs> A couple of quick ones. Uh, we're gonna get. Uh, we'll touch on it now, and then we're gonna get into it later with one of our coaches a little bit here. How about this? Uh, scouting reports. To be yes. or not to Don't be. Get... When we're uh, now, I'm asking you to touch on it gently here because we will touch on it later in the show with one of our guests. But okay. let me just put this to you: Say you are a athletic director at a a smaller school on the southern end of Bergen County, and you're playing a state semifinal game. Oh, I don't know, against a team from pick any Essex County, something like that, right? So right. you win the game. And you're cleaning up because, yeah, listen, you're a responsible administrator. Uh, you want to make sure that the facilities guys aren't there picking up water bottles and everything else. So as the last guy off the field, you check the opposing dugout, make sure nothing was left behind, no litter, no nothing. And you find a scouting report from an Inbergen County team, maybe a team very close to you that you had played earlier, geographically lo- located, uh, very close to you too. I mean, what what is the protocol in that situation? Should – Bergen County uh, coaches be giving away scouting reports to uh, teams from outside the coaching fraternity of this Bergen County close knit band of brothers. Um, I'll tell you how I handle it, or I would handle it, my feeling on it, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Bergen County coaches, we go up against each other in our leagues, in crossovers and independents. You want to beat each other every single time you're on the on the field. My philosophy was. When I coached, if somebody from outside of Bergen County called, emailed, text, whatever, can you give me something on so-and-so? Even if I didn't like the guy from Bergen County, I'm not giving a scouting report to another county. It's, that's just my philosophy. That's my, forget about relationships. Forget about anything else. Unwritten rule. Bergen County sticks with Bergen County. That's just me. All right, my last thing on the topic. Could you give us a little bit of that list of guys that maybe you didn't like in the Bergen County Coaches Circle? No, I, I was trying to be uh, – <laughs> I, I was – it's not – I'm saying even if I didn't like a guy. I, right, you know, right. I, I, guess. I just wanted, just, just wanted uh, to clarify. For example, well, <laughs> I would give a scout – I would have given a scout on Gambardella. Right. That's a guy you like, give away the score. That's a guy you give away a scout on. Like, you, you go, and because it's great. See the little guy go nuts on the sidelines. I miss that. I miss that. Yes. But, the, um, Joe, Joe Gambardella of the uh, Complete Performance Baseball Academy? Is that who we're talking yes. about here? Yeah, yes, that, that, is, that is the Joe Gambardella <laughs> we're talking about. 
Well, you know what I want to talk about for a second? Can I talk about something okay. for a second? Hey, listen, this is your show. Even if you don't show up every week, it's still your show. A little, I, I, I just cannot stand little league pitch like pitch counts. I, I, I just don't get it. I don't well, get what, it. I think, I think kids, I think kids are baby. I, I, I think, how do their arms, how do their arms develop? Like, here's my, here's my thing. If they throw twenty pitches. Okay, like if you limit them so much, how are they ever going to be able to, to, to tax their arm if their arm doesn't have the opportunity to to get that work, to be taxed a little bit? You know, a very good friend of mine who is a former assistant of mine, who is a former head coach of Cliffside Park Soccer, right. Jimmy Fusey, pointed out to me once, because we were going back and forth about it. Your arm only has so many throws in it. Like that, that's the belief. And if you talk to, if you, if you read what Nolan Ryan thinks about pitch counts, if it were up to him, there'd be no relievers in the game of baseball period. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Like I, I, I just today, you know, a little league game and the kid threw 20 pitches. We got to take him out. I'm like, I, like, I get it, but you're trying to protect the kid. But, but at the same time, these kids don't do like we used to tour pitch, Pitch four pitch. innings, and then you were the second best catcher. So the the kid who was catching was the be- best, you know, the next best pitcher. You flip flop, put the gear on, go throw. You go catch, and you know we weren't worried about. Oh my God, throwing is a different motion from behind the plate than on the mound. And should they be doing it? Just play the game of baseball, please. Shut off ESPN. Shut off all the analysts. That's breaking news, Sounder. Play. Joe Sutera looking to outlaw bullpens in the game of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? You know with football now, like how they're talking about uh, how you, oh my the God. younger grades that should go to flag football, no more tackle. Well, maybe we can figure out in little league baseball to play without throwing a ball. How about I, that? That would I, honestly, that would probably be ideal for some people because it's <laughs> it's just it's it's un- you can make an you can have an imaginary ball, uh, right. and you can all pretend to field it and make sure that way, that way you could actually call out ahead of time who gets the ball. So everybody gets the same amount of chances and it would be, it would be better. It would be a better game with no ball. Let's, let's, let's try it. Court. And all of us old guys sit here and complain about why these kids are inside playing video games. Cause there you're allowed to throw a hundred pitch. <laughs> all right, Joe, we were talking about uh, head coaches that you don't like. You mentioned Joe Gambardella. Yeah. Now I'm going to bring up the name of one that you do. As we welcome in our first guest here of the evening, he's joining us on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline, and he has a new name. He used to be Mikey Carsage. Now, with this run, the North One, Group One State Sectional Final, he is Sir Michael Anthony Carsage. Coach, thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Uh, Nothing, man. Thanks for having me. All right, so we are going to talk some baseball here because the uh, Fighting Blue Devils are still playing. North don't change North. our yeah, don't thing. change our nickname, please. We're not the Fighting Blue Devils. You know and your name. The, you're the, named after the squadron of bombers from France, I believe, during the Second World War. Listen, I do my research on this show. I know all about it. So okay. yes, you <laughs> are named after a fighting squadron from the Second World War. You're located very close to that airport over there in Teterboro. We're gonna go with the fighting blue devils. Sitch, Sitch, next year, next yes. year, Sitch, get get um, get single engine planes on the front of your hat instead of the WR. <laughs> we'll do, we'll uh, do. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> can, can the Woodridge School District handle the extra cost, Joe? It's associated with the extra embroidery. I don't. You don't understand. If questions. I put a plane on the hat, they're gonna they're gonna break my balls from being from heights in an aviator. They don't want anything nice <laughs> resembling anything on their uniform. Uh, that, that's the first good point made all night here on Talking Baseball. <laughs> but let's do that now here because, you know, listen, we've been following you. I was there on opening day. I'm talking to you here in uh, the last, what, 10 days of the season. So things have hope. been going well. Woodridge uh, going into a section final here. Just, you know, beat Cedar Grove, which obviously was a good team because it beat Emerson on Emerson's home field. You guys took them out in the semifinals. How do we feel in Woodridge today? Pretty good. I think we played uh, one of our best games the other day against a quality opponent in a big situation. Um, not to uh, 
you know, out of the first three rounds that we had, that was definitely our, our first real big test, and we, we kind of knew it coming up, and I think we stepped up to the challenge and did what we had to do and weathered the storm for the first couple innings and got our bats going later on in the game. And, you know, got us a good win against a quality team. Yes, and six runs, which I think it was one nothing first, right? Then you, you, it was zero zero through three. Is that correct? I think it was two no. one three, two runs in the in the fourth, one run in the fifth, and then three in the sixth. So that means that your pitching held down the fort. Talk about that a little bit. Our pitching did hold down the fort. The kid Joe Bacho is now nine one on the season. You know, he got three now state wins for us, I believe, and. You know, he's pitching well. He's uh, limited hits. He only gave up one hit at double. And, uh, you know, we've just got to work on giving him too many free passes away. You know, we got lucky that five walks could come back to bite us. And then uh, Pronti came back healthy. He was feeling pretty good. And uh, he limited him to one hit as well. And that's a pretty decent team. So to give them just two hits, you know, throughout seven innings is, you know, pretty good on our staff. Now, Joe, are you going to ask questions of this or you just want to sit by and soak up the Woodridgeness of this show? There's nothing. There's nothing really to say. I mean, the kids are playing. The kid, there's nothing to ask. I mean, they, I see them every day. I see, you know, I see them. Prepared. Yeah, but Joe, we don't. We don't. You know, not everybody is the athletic director at Woodridge High School. <laughs> no, no but, but I think at this at this point, everybody knows uh, that that they're going to be prepared. I think one of the things that that they're doing in these first three games is that when another team, not that they haven't done it all year, but Mike, I think you'll agree that you know when you guys have had the opportunity to put a team away in these three state games and capitalize on mistakes, you guys are, are putting your foot down and, and, you know, uh, taking, crushing the rest of the air out of, out of whatever they may have. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're just doing what good teams do at this time in the season. So it's playing your best baseball. And I think right now you guys are playing your best baseball. You'd agree. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take back over, Joe. You can go back over there and just listen. Now, I <laughs> covered the other half of the sexual sec- – Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. One. Take it over, big guy. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. The, yeah, make you know sure. what, Let though? Me... I get very excited when, when Mike Carson <laughs> is on the phone. You know? never, this is the first time I've ever talked to him as a grown man. Oh, God, <laughs> that's Mike great. Happened. That's Mike great. That's <laughs> great, you Horses jackass. Great. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember? You know, last week I did a show. Nobody answered the phone. Joey Chaperone was busy. Richie Ballgame was busy. I just sat here in the world headquarters of NorthJerseySports.com. I did serious interviews. It was all baseball talk. I mean, you know, really quality programming for your internet enjoyment. And now I'm back to this. Uh, I, yeah, I, I got a guy on. I mean, I got Joe Sotero over there busting chops. I got a guy who I can't stop calling Mikey on the other end of the phone. I'm all discombobulated this week. But anyway, Mike, I was talking to Frank Clark, the head coach of Waldwick, who is your opponent on Friday. And you know what? The interesting thing that we were talking about is that I think of all the places I go to cover games, your two fields present the biggest home field advantage. I mean, you guys are very comfortable on the turf with your big alleys. Uh, you know, the, the the straightaway center field. Waldwick is a whole different – I mean, the, the really the game is different. The angles are different because of the short porch and right. Uh, you know, Frank thought it important that he got you guys off of your home field. How about dealing with that? Other than the fact that you're going to have to go play a good Waldwick team in Waldwick, you got some angles to contend with, too. How do you deal with that? It's funny because coming into uh, round two against Cedar Grove, we actually – you know, we're talking about the turf being to our advantage for this team that doesn't really play on a lot of turf league, uh, teams throughout their league. They play more on dirt. Our whole league is turf, so it becomes an advantage, especially for our outfielders. And it actually happened that it really broke open the game for us against Cedar Grove. Left fielder misplayed a ball that really probably should have been a single double at best and ended up going all the way to the fence and scoring two kids on the same play. And that was definitely a little home field advantage. Now, uh, obviously, going to Waldwick on dirt, which we're not used to playing, we got to prepare. So we we got to be going to Munaki, our uh, JV field, if you will, for uh, today and tomorrow, just to take ground balls and just get used to the dirt and the grass for both, you know, all through all positions on the field and just prepare accordingly. You know, we know that the field is to their advantage, and uh, you know, it's also to our advantage. I think we do a lot of hitting opposite way as well. And uh, as long as we make the routine play and, and limit the free pass on the base, I think we got a good chance to win. But no doubt, they are a really good team. Yeah, the kid more on the mound throw was probably what around like high seventies, low eighties, or something like that. So he's definitely, you know, the probably the best pitcher we're gonna see so far. Yeah, and he is good breaking stuff too. I mean, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to be accused of leaving scouting reports on the bench. Nah, I heard about it already. <laughs> 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 good 
good one, Cor. Good one, buddy. Uh, yeah, uh, get me, get me know, started on that one. Inside joke. Go back and listen to the beginning of the show where we touch a little bit on some uh, hot topics of the day here on Talking Baseball. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the Creskill game. First of all, Cresco, I should say this, unbelievable job to get to the section, sectional Yeah, Donnie did a great job. Really, uh, you know, three seniors on that team, he expects to be back there and, and, and good for him. But, you know, their their leadoff hitter hits one off the fence in right field. I know, right to start, start the, the game, game, right? I mean, a line drive, sizzling line drive that hit the yellow piping at the top of the fence. He has to pull up at first. The next kid hits a single down the right field line. He thinks he's getting two. Donnie holds his kid up at second because because the fence is so so short there, you forget how shallow. I mean, that's the advantage you get is you're so shallow, it cuts off first to third and it cuts off second to home. And those are things that you really got to think about there. They lost the guy yeah. on the base pass in the first. If they score a run there, maybe it's a different game. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what he was telling me today. Yes. All right. So that's my soliloquy on the Waldwick home field advantage. Uh, have you decided on a starting pitcher? Michael. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, Nick Pronti. He's uh, he's feeling good. He pitched, once like I said, he broke out as a starter in that Emerson game, pitched well. He's always our closer. Ended up having four saves this whole season. So we give him a couple spot starts here and there. And, uh, you know, Joe Batchel won five great innings, so we have him to come back for five and Steve. So we'll start with Nick and see how he goes, and hopefully he can get us good, you know, good distance. And we have Batchel waiting in the wings. How about mentally here, trying to keep the kids from getting, you know, over pumped or trying to keep them from getting nervous. You know what I mean? Uh, have you looked up inspirational speeches on the internet or are you doing all, all the top of your head? <laughs> no, I, you know, I always look some, we, we were quoting actually major league this, uh, this last week, let's go win the whole effort thing. And Joe actually put a sign up in the locker room that says F in like F star, star, star. So I, I'll be breaking I my balls for having a somewhat curse in the locker room over there. Right. I saw it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're obviously looking forward to it to keep these kids grounded. You know, the good thing is we've been in a lot of games like this. You know, at least the tournament games, where if you will, the counties the last couple of years we had, you know, a league championship team basically this year that had some pressure situation to where we had to come from behind. Obviously, the three state games so far. So we've been in some situations before to hope give us some experience. And I think these kids are grounded and confident in themselves and their abilities. And, uh, you know, if the only state, I mean, mental toughness is going to win the games. A good wise man once told me that. I think it was my AD. So whoever's got more mental toughness in this game is going to end up yeah, falling out. And that's been the yeah. case so far in the tournament. You can't, All right. Last can't coach that. Oh, go last, can't question coach. From, go ahead. last question from me. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, county final. Have you heard anything maybe from a little birdie about the final play of the Burton County championship game this past weekend? Mr. I heard about it. I saw pictures on it. I don't know if it was your picture. I'm assuming it was. Because actually, it's a funny thing. Remember, I don't know. It was when I was at Emerson on varsity assistant. We played Don Bosco there. There was a controversial call at first, if you remember. It was like a 5-2 yes. game. We ended up losing. You took a photo shot of that same scenario. I'm saying to myself, this is like a, you know, a familiar picture. Same scenario. Yeah, and yeah. I heard about it, and then I saw about it. But this one was three feet away from the kid. Jesus. Yeah, terrible. Did your old uh, man I mean, uh, impart any... To- uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, he he was obviously not a happy scenario. Usually, me and him talk after every game, and uh, you know when I call him, it's always an answer or a call back. I called him once, nothing. Half hour later, I called him again, and then I got like, a text, which meant he was probably just blowing me off. He's texting me right back, so he was pissed. You could tell. Right. But he, yeah, yeah. and then that, I, you know, when there's a four man crew, apparently you can't you can't get help from the home plate umpire. So whenever the guy I may uh, call, they're stuck with it. Next thing you know, the officials are out of there. Tough way to lose for for Bergen. Yeah, no, it, it was definitely rough. Anyway, I learned a few things here. Even though we've talked many times during the course of the season, I learned a, f- a few things that you are now a sir going forward on the site. And <laughs> I learned that I am one heck of, a, heck of a photographer and have been so for a very, very long time. Yeah, for a long time since I remember, ever since I was a little twerp working that county tournament at my old man's. <laughs> ever since you earned the name Mikey. Ever since Mike I started on it that way. The maybe I always comes back down to this. <laughs> the head coach of the uh, Woodridge Fighting Blue Devils. Big game on Friday against Waldwick. Uh, and with the change of the schedules now, games being moved up to Thursday, which is great. It opens up more opportunities for us to cover more stuff, which means I will be in attendance in Waldwick. Ah, well, are you there? Nice. Yes. All right. So thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball, and thanks for uh, keeping Joe Cetera out of the conversation. Absolutely. I told you. I wasn't saying anything. I appreciate it. I'm a man of my word. I said I wasn't saying anything. I said one thing, and Sitch did not even respond to it. So 
that made it clear. I was out. I said I was going to be out. It's about Sitch and the kids. All right? Yeah. Done. It also it also <laughs> shows that I, another thing I learned tonight, Michael Korsich has had enough of Joe Cetera. The yeah, end yeah. of the season can't come soon enough in that respect. But we hope it doesn't end for you on Friday, Mike. Congratulations on getting this far, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thank you, guys. All right, interesting stuff there with Woodridge head coach Sir Michael Anthony Korsich. And now we move on to – the lowest seeded Bergen County and North Jersey Sports.com coverage area baseball team with games still remaining. Joining us now on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline is a man who I want to catch up with not only to talk about his red hot baseball team, but also to apologize on behalf of North Jersey Sports.com for covering zero games this season and waiting until there are, oh, I don't know, eight days left in it to do any type of coverage, we welcome in Pascac Hills head coach Kevin Kirkby. Coach, I'm sorry. Corey, no need to apologize. Well, you know, it, I, I've been wanting to cover you all year, but Joseph Terra says, nah, forget them. They beat us. They scored 14 runs on us in Woodridge. That's not, that's not. It. <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> it's so typical of him, too, because he, he tells me, oh, he goes, I got Kirkby. I said, oh, good, all right, yeah, okay. He goes, yeah, but I, I haven't covered him all year. And he goes, you know, I, I'm afraid of how it looks and, and this and that. I said, would you stop? I mean, the first thing he tells me, he picks up the, go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't cover you. Do you apologize? Do you apologize to every other team? Look, the guy's having a good year. He deserves to be on the show. Get him and his kids exposure and leave it at I'm that. I'm honored. I'm honored. Joe, don't honored. worry. Thank you. All right. So, anyway, I don't know how many stinking apologies. He's been on the basketball show 700 times. Yeah, exactly. Time. You so, got us all the time for you, so it's fine. It's all right. Now, let's talk about these Pascal Kills Cowboys because this is quite a run that you guys are on. I mean, uh, 12 seed in a tough bracket. The Ramses were in there. The Mawas were in there. Uh, you're cleaning the thing out, heading into the final on, when are you playing, Friday? Friday at Jefferson, yeah. Friday at Jefferson, but before we get to that, let's talk about the last one. A, you know, I think all of North Jersey was shocked when they saw the box score that uh, Jack Brodsky, your sophomore, throws a complete game three hitter and knocks Mawa out of the state tournament. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, he, um, you know, Jack is. We we have you know we have a lot of really young pitchers. Um, you know, he's a sophomore who uh, right now is currently riding a, uh, I think it's nineteen or twenty consecutive scoreless innings. Um, 11 of which have been in the uh, state tournament, which is pretty cool. Um, Crazy. But uh, he's been, you know, very quietly, you know, hasn't been getting much recognition, but uh, he's been our most consistent pitcher all year. He kind of had one bad outing early in the year. Um, but I think I think if I'm getting his record right now, I think he's 6-3. and three. You know, he lost, he lost a tough game to, to Dumont. He lost to Riverdale. Um, and he had a, uh, you know, his, his worst game of the year was his first game of the year against Wesley. But, uh, you know, he, he came in relief against Baquanic and threw four hitless innings. Uh, he walked the kid, and then he proceeded to pick him off first. And then, uh, you know, yesterday was just, you know, was the, you know, was the, 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 the pinnacle of his season. Um, I mean, he was in total control after the first batter of the game. I think he was a little bit nervous the first batter. He gave up a hit, and then he balked the kid to second. And then, he uh, you know, he proceeded to get a uh, soft bouncer back to the mound and a strikeout to strikeout from, you know, arguably three potential all-county kids hitting. And then after that, he was just kind of in cruise control. You know, it, 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 Joe, it's the great thing about baseball because the team you are at the beginning of the season is not the team you're supposed to be at the end yes. of the season. We're talking about a sophomore here. Uh, shaky start, is for, as, as Kevin just said there, his, his worst start was his, was his first start. His best start was his last start. Kind of makes yeah. a little bit of sense, huh? Yeah, he's uh, – Yeah, no, you know, I, I, it, it, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, sorry. Joe. Go, yeah. No, it's all right. I, I was just going to talk to uh, as a uh, from a you know coaching perspective of of you know kind Say of a whole of fame Mike, coaching perspective with what with from a whole of what we talked with <laughs> what we talked <laughs> about with Mike earlier is is that you you know you're playing your best baseball now, but when I saw the box score and you know I tried to put myself in in that situation as as the coach of that team going into Mawa. You know, uh, the deck is stacked against you. You you, you kind of don't really change what you do, and and you hope you you know you can your, your kids are ready and they're up. And but to go in there and shut them out three nothing is is something that you know I I don't know if if you would have expected it or 
you know, talk about a little bit about what makes that team go and, and your leaders both, you know, on the field and, and your mentally tough guys that, that kind of keep everybody in line there. Well, the, the funny thing is, is that the, the, my plan going into the game is we had four or five kids ready to pitch. And I was hoping Jack was going to be able to give us, you know, four good innings, three good innings, and then show him a different arm, you know, bring a lefty in, you know, who might, you know, be more of an off-speed guy than, you know, bring another righty in. Then, you know, we have, we have a kid who's been doing a great job for us closing, Jake Cortazzo, who's, you know, a 6'3 lefty who throws the ball pretty good. Um, you know, I was hoping maybe we'd be able to, con- you know, confuse him that way. So that was our plan. And, you know, <laughs> obviously Jack was, no, I'm not having any of that, Coach. I'm just going to go all seven. But, um, you know, you we go. have the, 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 the kid that makes us go is, is our catcher. Um, I mean, Jake Chiavelli has been our starter since he was, you know, since he was a freshman. And, uh, you know, he's been batting third for three years. And, uh, you know, it's funny because in our, in our conference, he doesn't get the recognition that I think he deserves, you know, because we have the kids like Lee Martino from Mawa and Yellen from, uh, um, from Riverdale and the Ramsey kids, Thursley. You know, they're all, you know, perennial, all league, potential, all county kids. But, uh, you know, Jake doesn't, he doesn't hit, you know, hit the homers the way the other kids do. But, you know, he's batted over 300 the past three years. You know, he's, he's approaching 100 hits. And, uh, you know, he, he, he very quietly throws out a lot of kids behind the plate. And, he you know, he called a phenomenal game. And, uh, it, you know, I think the development of our pitching, you know, can be attributed to what he does handling them as, mu- as much as anything else. And, you know, we're young. I mean, you know, the three kids that we have starting in the state are two sophomores and a junior. And, um, wow. you know, and, and wow. he, you know, he, there's only been a handful of times all year where I've had to look at him and, and call a pitch where I disagreed on what I thought he was going to call. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, he, he's our leader back there without a doubt. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's what makes us go. And, uh, you know, the kids have been, you know, it's a phenomenal group of kids when it comes to like team camaraderie. Um, you know, our, it's funny because I don't ever like to try and compare the basketball program to the baseball program. But our basketball kids, you know, we've had a lot of success, and they really are a family. You know, they always do team on, you know, team on three, family on six. That's the way they close every huddle, and they really are a family on and off the court. Um, but these kids have become just as much of one as the uh, as the basketball team. I mean, they hang out. You know, practice ends. You know, they're not going their separate ways. They're going out to the diner to eat together. They're going to someone's house to have a pool party. You know, the amount of uh, you know barbecues and cookouts, and team dinners we've had this year. You know. Is, is, is phenomenal. So I think all that team camaraderie kind of helps, you know, if one kid makes a mistake, you know, there's no animosity towards him at all. You know, the next guy's picking him up and, and the amount of chatter and, 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 you know, picking up at our teammates is, is what's really helping us, you know, improve and, and kind of turn our season around. See, that all sounds great, but it makes me feel guilty. I haven't covered you once. Uh, don't, <laughs> yeah. It's funny. If you, if you watch us, we're not, we're not one of those teams you'd see walk through the airport and say, wow, that team's impressive looking. <laughs> right. We don't, have, we don't have a lot of size. We don't have a lot of speed. But the kids, you know, the kids play real hard. They never give up. And, uh, you know, we don't have that kid who's going to be a first-team all-county kid. But we got a lot of guys who uh, do a lot of little things right. So. Yeah, yeah and I'm just, there's a lot of first team first team all county kids that wish they were still playing right now. I'll tell you that exactly. That's yep. True. I mean, that, that's right, the so funny I, thing is that our, our in our conference this year, I mean, you know, we're in the same conference as Mawa and Ramsey and Riverdale and Westwood. You know, so we go 0 and 8 in our conference this year, but we're the you know we happen to yeah. get you know we get get hot at the right time and you know and we're the last team. Standing. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, it's, absolutely. It's like you said before with baseball, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And we've kind of found our identity a little bit recently. And, you know, we're doing guys who are being asked to bunt in situations where they normally don't. They're getting the bunt down, hitting runs, all that stuff. They're all kind of, you know, coming through in, in great situations. So I couldn't be proud of, the, uh, proud of how the kids have been, uh, you know, playing and how they've turned their season around. Well, don't give away too much information because Jefferson's not in our coverage area and we don't want them to win. So don't <laughs> give away your strategy. I mean, we're, we, we, hate, we hate Jefferson, don't we, Joe? <laughs> Well, hey, we're pulling for the Berg. We're we're pulling for the Berg. Always County pulling for the Berg County. County. Right. That's probably Kev, what let me ask you. Let me let me ask you a question, Kev, from left field here. You're sure. I'm a Bergen County coach. You're, you're a Bergen County coach. Okay. <laughs> you get a team. You get a team from outside of Bergen County that calls you for a scout. Do you give it to that out of team or or not? Do you, do you give it to that team that's outside of Bergen County or not? Uh. I would have to have some relationship with the coach, you know, I think to do that. I'm not a, uh, okay. 
I'm not a believer on helping, you know, again, I, I like to try and help our, you know, I, I would have, you know, if, if I had played Jefferson and Ramsey was playing, you know, had won and they were playing Jefferson in the finals, you know, I would have, I would have called, uh, you know, Bill Chesney in a heartbeat and said, listen, this is what I know about him. I'm all about helping the guys right. that I know. So, uh, you know, that's the way I would feel okay. about it. But all right. So, yeah. All right. Fair enough. We're <laughs> Corey and I, right. did Corey somebody, somebody call for us. First guy yeah. report. <laughs> I, well, you know, it's just, we were, Corey and I were discussing who, you know, the, our, our philosophies on that. And, and mine is, that you know, you I like if I play you a hundred times, Kev, I want to beat you a hundred times. Uh, hold no on, hold on, Joe. I'll... Joe, one second, what? one second. We what? didn't do this in the opening. Let, let, let's set this up properly here. No, 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 no. That, it's gonna be quick. And now it is time for the segment that everybody has grown to love here on Talking Baseball. It's unbelievable. It's the Joey Fashion Show. <laughs> Rant. <laughs> oh, wasn't even a blip on the radar. The week. My kids are running around. Sponsored by Moe's Southwest Grill. Good to be back. Put some hot sauce on. All right, Joe. Now continue. That wasn't really, it, it's not really a rant. It was just going to be that, you know, I know different guys have, have different philosophies, but it, I just have, I want to, I'll be, I want to beat you a hundred times. If we play, we're in the same league. We're going to go at it. We're going to, we're, we're going to try to, you know, beat the hell out of each other. But if that guy from, if somebody from Essex County, Morris County calls me on a scout for, for the, for Pascal Kills, I'm not giving it to him. I'm yeah. not giving it to him. That's just it. And I mean, I, I would have had to, like, know, known the guy from, you know, I went to college with him or I used to coach with him or something like that. That's the only way I would uh, I would help somebody from outside our own little uh, coaching uh, uh, fraternity yeah, here. It, oh, I learned yeah, something. It did, Kevin, sound, Kevin, it did sound a little bit ass. like a rant. It, didn't it sound a little bit like a rant? I, I think if I didn't know Joe, I would have might have thought it was a rant. But I know Joe well enough. I think that it, he wasn't rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That's just conversation in the Satara house. That's for sure. All right, let's. Uh, I just want to go back and talk about a couple things now. Now that we got you on the line, now we're catching up with Pascal Kills baseball. You know, I know the win against Mawa was great, but let, let's go back a little bit because you know, Paqu- you guys are the twelve. You go in with a road trip to Paquanic. Paquanic is a historically. Uh, a great Morris County program. I saw them last year put up a good fight against Ramsey in the sectional semifinals, I believe. Uh, they had a lot of kids back from that team, so I know they were good. Then, uh, as luck would have it, you know, Walk Hill Valley upsets Dumont. You get a home game. Talk about that experience at home against Walk Hill Valley. Yeah, that was uh, that was a, that was a pretty cool experience. You know, we we got we went to to Paquonic on uh, I guess it was a Monday, and we got uh, we got into the fourth inning and we got rained out, so we had to go back on the Tuesday. And, uh, you know, the kids came back a lot, a lot, you know, looser on Tuesday. And uh, we played a little bit better. We played a lot, you know, more like we had been playing the, the week or so up to that. Hit the ball a little bit. Uh, and we, you know, we were able to get out of there with a win. And like you said, you know, Dumont getting upset gave us the first home game. You know, we haven't had a home state game in probably close to a decade at Hills. Um, and uh, they, they, they moved the game to 2 o'clock because we had uh, some religious issues with, uh, with about five of the kids on our team. Um, so, uh, you know, what wound up happening is they, you know, the game started at 2 o'clock and, you know, our school ends at 2.50 or so. And it was the, you know, we had off that Friday. So a lot of the teachers uh, decided to bring their kids up the last period of the day. And we had hundreds of kids lining up the left field, uh, down the left field line, which, uh, you know, I mean, if, if anybody's been to Hills for, you know, a state basketball game, you know, it's a pretty cool experience. We had that experience plus some probably at the uh, at the baseball game. And now, listen, I'm going to let people in on a couple of inside secrets that I know from your days over there coaching the Pascal Kills boys basketball program. Did you have to give out extra credit to get the kids to the game? Or not? I did not, no, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice. The kids, the kids don't want to come up, which is cool. So, uh, you, you know, we... you know, Joe, the, the cowboy crazies are known all over the place in North Jersey on the basketball side of it. And you see every kid uh, from Montville and, and Woodcliffe Lake comes walking in with a T-shirt on. They're loud. They got their chance. They have everything. They're in unison. You know, and then you find out that the only reason they're they're there is because Mr. Kirkby is handed out an extra point or two. Yeah, oh, unfortunately, you're going to get the guy in trouble. You're going to get the guy in that's, trouble. <laughs> that, that's unfortunately that, that's been squashed by our administration. They uh, no more uh, extra extra credits for non-academic things. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, it was. So was uh, our career here on Talking Baseball because we have just taken down another. Uh, <laughs> 
very talented coach here in New England. Oh, thank so you. So for anybody who's listening, all of that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Kirkby, listen, we should have got to you sooner, but we didn't. Not we. So I'm glad we not we. Yard. Not we. You. You. <laughs> you. I thought, you know, Joe, one guest each every week you could have suggested Kevin Kirkby, and I could have got him on the horn, but we got him here tonight. <laughs> he gave us some great insight. Uh, I'm glad we could catch up. Good luck against Jefferson, and I hate to say it, but I ain't going to Jefferson. That's, you get to the state semifinals, and I am there, pal. Sounds, that, that sounds a good plan. Hopefully we can be having this conversation again in a week, and we're still playing. Yes. But uh, Kevin Kirkby, Pascal Hills head coach. Thanks again, and we will talk to you soon. Best of luck. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Wish uh, Mike good luck for me. All right, Joe. Interesting stuff there first with Sir Michael Anthony Carsich of the Battling. Woodridge Blue Devils is that better? You like battling better, Joe? I I, I just like Blue Devils. That's what we are. Uh, all right, and also <laughs> with Pascal Kills head coach Kevin Kirkby, and we I told you we'd get a little bit deeper into the uh, scouting report rant. You got to play your little sounder. Did you like hearing that? I did. I, I I did because it's 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 something I'm very passionate about. I don't believe they should be giving scouts to other counties, but that's just my philosophy. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, you are a Hall of Famer, so your opinion does count for something. Well, it doesn't count in my house, so apparently it's it's got to count somewhere. Yes, and this is what goes on in that house. Hey, Cor, yes. back. we can't find my son, James. i got to call you back. This is not good. We're in panic mode right now. <laughs> so I, I can't. That one back for you. That's okay. I, that's okay because, we've you know, we've talked about it here and there, and – it's actually come up to where once in a while he'll be like, uh, Dad, remember when you lost me in Ridgewood? <laughs> yeah, buddy, I sure do. Uh, so does the rest of Bergen County. And, and anyone anyone with a computer that, that goes to NorthJerseySports.com. <laughs> right, there's only a Oh, man. Uh, yeah. So good stuff, though. I mean, the, the state tournaments, I love this time of the year. First of all, because it's almost over, and I've been working every stinking day since September. But uh, most of all, because, uh, you know, base, people ask me all the time, what is your favorite sport to cover? And I will tell you, I love the basketball playoffs, night in, night out, going to a packed gym, seeing a big game after big game. But you get a day like today, boy, 79 degrees and sunny, and you're out watching high school playoff baseball. You know, I hope tomorrow, as we take this on Wednesday night, I hope Thursday is more of the same. While I'm at the uh, Ramapo Northern Highlands North 1 Group 3 State Semifinal, Joe, it doesn't get much better than that. Cora, there's nothing better than than and you know bias whatever high school baseball at this time. These teams that are left, the kids putting the uniform on and 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 just I don't even know if a lot of them understand you know what they're about to step on the field to try to accomplish and if they do, the you know the elation they're going to feel and unfortunately if they don't. It's going to stay – either way, it's going to stay with them for, for the rest of their lives. It's it's why you play. Um, it's it's why you prepare. It's, it's you know, some of these kids, that's it. They're going to play this game and move on, or they're going to play the game and their, their careers are going to be over and, you know, not go on to play anymore. But either way, it is the best, best time of year, um, you know, tournament baseball. Yeah. And it sounded like from, you know, Kirkby talking about the closeness of his squad this year. I mean, maybe they don't understand it now, but 10, 15 years from now they will. And they'll stay friends and they'll get together at somebody's house, uh, you know, and th th this is what they're going to be talking about. So it, it, this is the great part of high school sports, and this is why we have to move away from this college model of sports because, you know, this is what it's about. It's uh, games amongst friends late in the season with a lot of stuff on the line. Uh, kids who grew up playing together. Anyway, I'm going to get off the soapbox and I'm going to get off this show. We will see you next week on Talking Baseball. Follow the leader.